We are standing at the threshold of a new era where artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and stable digital currencies are converging to create an entirely new socio-economic paradigm. It's no coincidence that at the Consensus 2025 conference, major figures like Nicholas Kokalis, Pi Network, Lele, Kite AI, Eric Weiner, Neo AI, and David Fields, Radio AI, sat down not to discuss coin prices or market caps, but to talk about the restructuring of the digital world in the near future. Among all speakers, only Dr. Nicholas Kokalis' talk was published by Coindesk on its ex Twitter account. The power of the Pi Network community was made clear as that video reached 282,000 views, over four times higher than Chainlink's 78,000 views. Based on these numbers, developers can see where the most promising communities in the consensus projects are. Decentralization is a matter of survival. When asked about the current stage of AI, Nicholas Kokalis compared it to the early days of electricity, where the technology existed, but widespread deployment was just beginning. David Fells called this the 90s of the internet, except now AI already has global distribution infrastructure, which means adoption will happen much faster. Eric Weiner referenced the launch of the iPhone and App Store, a moment when the world thought everything was already invented, but in reality, we were only just stepping through the door. Lele stated, we've entered the age of AI agents, AI systems capable of interaction, negotiation, and decision-making on behalf of humans. But this raises an important question. Who controls these intelligences and how? In a post-human intelligence era, decentralization is no longer an ideal. It's a necessity for survival. If AI can clone itself millions of times and trade like an expert, how can we tell who is real? That's why Pi Network chose to verify every individual before allowing them to activate their blockchain account. As Nicholas said, you need to know who is human and who is a bot, especially when trying to fairly distribute value and resources. David Fields elaborated, we're not just structuring data for AI, we're building a decentralized competitive system. Humans can't process all the data, but AI can't self-authorize either. Blockchain introduces barriers, constraints, and origin-based validation mechanisms. Lele added, I don't care if you're decentralized or not. I care what you do with my data and whether I'm rewarded if you use it to train your model. Users don't need to understand blockchain for AI to transact. A key point in the discussion was about AI agents transacting with one another. Who pays with what and how? Eric proposed the idea of AI tool a protocol for AI agents to exchange data and settle payments via smart contracts. No banks, no credit cards. Stable coins become the default medium of exchange. David explained that in the enterprise world, data is a vital asset. Decentralized blockchain protects and shares data transparently without being monopolized by big tech giants like OpenAI or Google. Nicholas concluded, blockchain not only verifies identity, it ensures value distribution is not manipulated by a few. Tens of millions can participate, experiment, create apps, and together build a truly people-powered digital economy. A point all speakers agreed on. Users don't need to understand what blockchain is to benefit from it. They simply need convenience, security, and fairness in how value is created and distributed. Lele emphasized, users will choose what's easy to use. Blockchain must improve user experience. Don T make them remember passwords or pay gas fees at every step. Let them enjoy the value without feeling burdened. Eric confirmed, AI will make decisions for users. And those AIs need decentralized payment infrastructure to optimize costs share rewards, and protect users from hidden fees. The power of the new economy, AI plus blockchain plus stablecoin. In the final session, the audience was asked a central question. Can AI, blockchain, and stablecoin become the commercial infrastructure of the future? Nicholas replied, only when great products are built by real, verified people will value truly spread. Blockchain is not just tech. It's a mechanism to resist manipulation. David stated, stable coins have quietly been built up over the past decade. Now is the time to combine them with AI to create a borderless, automated, and intermediary free commerce system. Eric affirmed, 
When AI agents pay one another and share revenue with dozens of contributors, from data providers to API creators, that is when blockchain as power shines, Lele added, partnering with businesses will be key. They have users, systems, and if integrated correctly, stablecoins and blockchain will fuel a transparent, shared, and sustainable economy. No single AI blockchain or app will take the world to the next level. But if we have real human communities, transparent AI tools, and a stable decentralized payment network, we can build a more equitable digital world. In such a world, citizenship records won't be a city hall. They'll live on the blockchain, and digital citizens want to just be users. They are the verified individuals who are the rightful actors of the AI-powered economy. By now, you can see how Pi Network is leading the future. While most in tech are asking, who will AI replace? Pi Network, a quiet project with no ICO and no flashy listings, started by asking a different question. Who should AI serve? This is not just a technical shift. It's a social and political choice. While the world sees AI as a product, Pi views it as public infrastructure. And most importantly, Pi is not selling technology. It's making technology accessible. Kite AI requires high technical understanding. Neo AI charges developers for API access. Radio AI offers multilingual dialogue, but has high cloud operating costs, making it out of reach for the average user. These are smart tools, even capable of replacing office workers, but they remain inaccessible to a farmer in Africa, a factory worker in Vietnam, or a mountain teacher in Peru. Pi, on the other hand, took a different route. From day one, it didn't build an AI app to attract investors. It built a digital ecosystem that can be accessed via everyday smartphones, lets people earn rewards through contributions, verifies identity through community, and offers compact AI tools in its own DAP marketplace, no Pi browser. No need for crypto wallets, no need to understand algorithms, no dedicated servers required. With Pi, the most widely used device on earth, your phone becomes your gateway into the new economy. And this is no accident. In the mind of Stanford engineer and Pi co-founder Nicholas Kokalis, AI and blockchain aren't domination tools. They're instruments of liberation. Not liberation from governments or laws, but from inequality in access to technology. Blockchain and AI must be allies. Many once thought Pi was just a mobile mining game until they saw the deeper structure. Pi doesn't just create digital currency, it has built in a verified digital identity system using zero knowledge proof. Strong enough to rival WorldCoin by Sam Altman, but without eye scans or biometric data. It's creating a Web3 civil registry where the community verifies each other via a global network of tens of thousands of distributed validators. Technically, it's a silent revolution. No Amazon data centers, no dependency on corporations, no big tech data mining. You become a digital citizen of a decentralized republic. Socially, it's a story of democratization. Someone without a bank account can now store digital assets. Someone without access to public services can now verify they are human and receive support via decentralized apps. Someone never acknowledged by AI can now interact, learn, and earn with their own data. Most current discussions about AI are tragic. AI will make millions jobless. AI will replace journalists, doctors, teachers. But in Pi's model, AI isn't the job thief. It's the collaborator. A remote teacher can draft lesson plans faster. A farmer can ask AI about crop health using photos. A small shopkeeper can get AI to translate ads into multiple languages, but none of this can happen unless AI is in the hands of people. Not locked in data centers, not priced via credit cards, not charged monthly fees. To achieve this, AI must go hand in hand with blockchain to ensure data ownership, monetization rights, and identity control. At this intersection, Pi creates a profound fusion of ethical tech and technical infrastructure. A technological republic without a central authority. If fiat currencies need central banks, Pi's economy has a 10 billion Pi reserve fund as its community treasury. If Web2 needed centralized ownership, Pi lets each individual hold their wallet key. If AI needs massive servers, Pi is moving toward a distributed compute network where each phone, each node, is part of a communal supercomputer. 
In a world governed by ads, surveillance, and data harvesting, Pi goes against the grain. It doesn't need to know who you are, only that you're real, active, contributing, and community verified. No exchanges, no price manipulation, no false interest projections. But if you look closely, Pi is doing what 26,000 other cryptocurrencies failed to do. Build an economy used by real people. Some may ask, has Pi even achieved anything? It's an open network, but has few relapse. Its coin price fluctuates. But history isn't T written by those who finish first. It is written by those who forge new paths. When an opportunity is so obvious that everyone sees it, it's no longer an opportunity. Apple took 20 years to become a platform. Google started as a small search engine. And Pi, by choosing to go slow, build genuinely, and avoid listings at any cost, may become the first model for a decentralized technological republic where AI and blockchain are not for hype, but for humanity. One day, when people around the world can use AI to learn, trade, sell, and save without needing a bank account, technology history will take notice, and people will realize that the ones who went first were in T the fastest, but those who understood who needed to be served first. And by choosing to serve the masses before they even understood what the technology was, Pi became the network that moved ahead of its time. Good luck, Pioneer. Your Pi, your choice.